Welcome to the Nuff Said Podcast, episode 14. So if you're keeping along in your playbook there and watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and saying, well, we're only on episode 12, how could you be on 14? Guess what? You've got a problem because this is not an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast. It's a Marvel podcast that just happens to talk about S.H.I.E.L.D. quite a bit right now. So here we are in episode 14, and we're not talking about S.H.I.E.L.D. We're talking about the Wolverine. Right. My name is rambunctious rob southgate and with me is i'm jabbing jack wengroski oh jabbing and a very special guest this is jj jonathan jameson jj Ooh, jack he might have shown you off he had the good marvel reference there oh there you go a little spider-man uh spidey action yeah, oh, a little and, spidey action and abrams <laughs> oh little jj abrams too uh-huh. so uh yeah i guess uh he's showing us up so Basically, we've had a couple of weeks off from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and that's no good when you're a Marvel fan. Uh, I was reading the comics this week, but I needed a little bit more, so we decided let's all talk about the Wolverine. So the reason we have Jonathan on, number one, Jonathan is one of the podcasters here at Southgate Media Group. He does the uh, Radio Free Endor podcast, which is all about Star Wars. Which is coming back soon. Which is awesome. Yes, it's coming back soon, and it's awesome. Uh, and man, Jonathan, there is a lot of Star Wars news going on right now. Yes, a lot of rumors, but uh, quite a bit of official news as well. You want to fill us in on a little bit of the official right now? Um, well, pretty much every day we're getting the announcements of um, of different Rebels characters. That's what it's not a lot of Episode 7 official news, but a lot of um, Rebels news. Yeah, lots of Rebels news, lots of images coming out from it and talk about it. Yeah, I mean, pretty much every other day we're getting um, characters from Rebels, and I'm constantly posting. You know, I didn't think, you know, oh, every so often, but now every so often I come on, oh, new character, new character. Um, So we got, like, a new Kanan. uh, I think that's the one. Um, He's like a... um, He's like... We're not quite sure who he is. We're thinking maybe he's a Padawan... Uh, former Jedi Knight, and so we is he, he the guy that they showed? I saw a picture where he had like some like like lightning coming out of his hand or something. No, I think you're thinking of uh, you're probably thinking of the Inquisitor. This guy is an actual Jedi. No, 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 it's a Jedi. He he was like uh, punching in the air, and there's like, or maybe he's got like an electric slingshot or something weird. I don't know what he's got going on there. But the Inquisitor is the bad guy. Yeah. He's the guy that has that lightsaber that has the thing that goes around his hand, right? Right. right. How sweet is that? Now, Jack, do you know what the, what we're talking about here? I have no idea. <laughs> well, welcome to the Nuff Said Podcast, where we talk about Star Wars things, and Jack knows nothing about Star Wars things here, apparently. <laughs> Rebels is a new Star Wars show uh, that's going to be coming on. Uh, it's Disney's doing it. It's an animated show. And uh, do you want to fill us in on that a little bit, Jonathan? Let let Jack know, as if you're talking to an alien, which you kind of are. <laughs> well, I'm. Um, um, you can find a lot of this stuff on the Facebook page, and that I mean, not as much on Ready for Endor, but maybe, perhaps, geek, mainly Geek Everything. Um, um, yeah, Geek Everything is your Tumblr page, which we actually put that blog on the Southgate Media yeah, Group that. website. And even if you don't have Tumblr, you can go to the Geek Everything. Facebook group, with the official Facebook group of the Geek Everything Tumblr. Okay. Uh, oh, it's official. Um, so, basically, Rebels is, as we all know, after Episode 3, all the Jedi were pretty much killed. Um, no, Jack didn't know. <laughs> well, that I do uh, know. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So, okay, so, throughout, we're kind of assuming, you know, throughout these years, which is around a t- 19 year gap or so you know um people like yeah, it's from Inqui- when luke is born until luke is luke in episode four right um so people like the inquisitor the inquisitors um it's not the inquisitor is actually not a uh one person inquisitors are actually various people including star killer oh uh, so that guy is the guy that we keep seeing is that star killer no that's not star killer <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh man, we're the worst. You know what? Let's talk about Marvel. Okay. Because at least That's we might be able to stumble our way through that. But if you are a Star Wars fan, definitely check out Radio Free Endor. And uh if you're like Jack and I where I mean I really love Star Wars, but I just don't know very much about 
Rebels in the extended universe. I'm just super jacked for Episode 7 and for the standalone movies. All that information is there at Radio Free Endor, and uh, I'm sure you can get up to speed real quick just by listening to Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, so let's get into this thing. Jonathan, the reason we have you on here is when, when The Wolverine came out, this is the movie that came out last year, uh, you actually went to a premiere? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. In um, New York City. Uh, so was it like the, it wasn't just like opening night, but it was like a red carpet premiere of the film? Um, it wasn't exactly red carpet. It was more like uh, on 42nd Street or Broadway in 85 degree weather, sweating in line. No red carpet, <laughs> nothing. Nothing of the sort. So uh, uh, so just kind of sweaty geek sheets instead of red yes, carpet. That's kind of what exactly. we had? Yeah, okay. basically, yes. Now, what did they do anything special? Were there actors there? Was there anything, you know, going on? Or was it really just, this is a premiere party? Oh, he was there. Shut up. Yep. Hmm. Hugh Jackman was there. Yes, he was there. Did you get to see him? Yes, I got, I was about... I don't know about a foot. I got him to sign. I got him to do a. Uh, Whoa! You got a signature too. Yeah, on my uh, EW Entertainment Weekly uh, magazine. It wasn't like a, you know, like a full signature. It was one of those like ones that they sign if they have like only have ten seconds to sign. So it was like All a right, so giant H. Like... It's like a giant H J or something. <laughs> okay, it's something. It's a blob. But you go. Yes, oh, exactly. Hugh Jackman did it. So did you, were you like, hey, Hugh, Matt, can you show me your, those sweet blades? Uh, I'm afraid not. Security. <laughs> he didn't break into, like, musical numbers or anything, because, you know, he's all Broadwayed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hello, Jonathan. Well, hello, Jonathan. Ah, <laughs> uh, this wasn't the Hugh Jackman experience I was expecting. I was kind of going more towards the Napoleon Dynamite uh, kind of thing there. Oh, I cannot imagine that. <laughs> did uh, did you see the thing where uh, Hugh Jackman was talking about uh, posing for the pictures for Wolverine, and he had like heavy sandbags in each hand, and that's how he posed. Oh, to make it look like he had the animanium. Right. Oh, that's sweet. Where'd you read that? That was on an interview. It was on uh, one of the late night shows. Wow, that is cool. So yeah, that's I took informed. Yeah, it, we were doing an outdoor barbecue, and my uh, uh, my wife's cousin was bringing a couple bags of ice in, and I said, "Dude, you got to pose. <laughs> you, you totally got to do the Wolverine pose." So I actually have him, you know, doing the pose. And you can't see the bags of ice, and it's totally the Wolverine thing. Oh, that's so cool! Hopefully, that's the only time you told your uh, brother-in-law, uh, "Dude, you got to pose." <laughs> well, yeah. You are a little creepy, Jack. <laughs> and here, I need you to sign this. It's a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> and here, send me some selfies. I'm Jack Lagrasky. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, before we go wow, off the rails on that. Yeah, that so, just took a bad turn. Yeah, it did. You know what? When we don't have S.H.I.E.L.D. to uh, anchor us back, this kind of goes off the rails really quick. So, Jack, did you watch the movie? Uh, no, not at all. I was oh, just uh, I would just figure I would kind of catch up as we go along. I'm actually watching it right now. You are <laughs> the worst. <laughs> now, you know, and the funny thing is, is not only did I watch it, but it was a couple of days ago, and I actually found my notes. I can't even find my car keys, but I actually <laughs> but you found, your I notes. found my notes for uh, Wolverine. So Okay, so here's the deal. I watched it a while ago. I took no notes. And I figured we'd just stumble our way through it. Jonathan, when was the last time you watched this? Um, let's see. I saw it twice. One at the premiere and then uh, once in the regular theater back in... We came out in July, right? Late yeah, so July. you haven't watched it on video since it came out? Nope. Okay. Uh, so we're all talking old here except for Jack, who's just seen it. So what did you guys think of the movie? I really enjoyed it. I I was very impressed you know, to be honest, when I first saw it coming out, I was a little worried that it was going to be, uh, I don't know. That it was going to be Wolverine Origins 2? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Oh, God. You know, I, I mean, I didn't really know where to go with it, and it 
it doesn't really give you the confidence to keep going. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. well, especially after X Men 3, when they did Last Stand, and then they went into Origins, it was like, oh my gosh, what are they doing to this series? Right. Even though, you know, l- let's be honest, even though those movies are not that great, I still watch them. I still, like, fall into them if they're on cable. Yeah, because yeah, it's Wolverine and it's X Men. It's still awesome. Right. And, but, but boy, like, X Men 2 is such an outstanding movie. Oh, yeah. W- once they dropped the ball, it was tough. But X Men Origins really good and uh frankly i think this wolverine stands among them i thought this was awesome yeah i enjoyed it and to me i was a little miffed that they killed off the uh the the uh, jane character um but you know this wait the jane character the jane, uh, was are you jane? talking about tarzan gray oh, oh jane gray jane gray what did i say jane jane jean. yeah jane gray you know, Jack, that's not a big surprise <laughs> we all have a, an English to Jack Jack to English dictionary we're working from. So. That's true. Well, see, that's why you're there. You're here to translate. <laughs> that's right. Although I'm the only one that's actually watched the movie within the I past know. week, so I wouldn't be talking, Mister Octa uh, Octopus or Doc Oct- <laughs> <laughs> Octopus. <What? laughs> <laughs> Octopusy. Oh, well, Octopusy. We could talk about that. What a great movie. Oh, that was awesome. But yeah, yeah you know when when they killed off Jean Grey, oh, because she was hurting people. That that was the only thing that I liked well, that, about you know it was like she came back as a ghost in this movie. Yeah, yeah, you know. Okay, so th- this was really trying to correct some of the mistakes of X Men Three. It was really trying to erase some of that stuff. The Jean Grey character having it having her come back as a ghost and everything. I thought that was really good, like haunting Wolverine. I thought that was really good. They did a real disservice in X Men Three when they killed off. Jean Grey, when they they did, I mean, that was supposed to be the Phoenix storyline, and it was like, man, they just completely crapped that one out. Right, and so now, you know, they're going to have to transition her back. Somebody's going to have to get her back from Limbo. It was, that they really crapped all over that one. Yeah, but they could they could definitely do it. Now they've set that up where, okay, things are back on track, at least that's my opinion. Jonathan, did you think the same thing? Um, <clears throat> back on track? Well, I mean, did you, okay, Let's ask the question a different way. What did you think of this movie? I really enjoyed it. Um, okay. Since, um, you know. Did you feel that it puts the X-Men universe back on track? Or are you in the, the boat of, well, it's just its own thing. It's just doing its own thing. Honestly, I'm just kind of going for the ride. Um, okay. Because really, you know, you look at X-Men 3, you know. Um, or was it X-Men? Well, one of them, he, um, you actually saw Professor X and him. Uh, and Magneto, which contradicted what happened in X Men First Class, right? Um, so I'm kind of giving up on continuity. I mean, <laughs> well, it is X Men. I mean, if you're a fan of the comics, you know that continuity goes out the window every about fourth issue. Yeah, though so with the movie, I'm hoping to stay a little, you know, a little more on track. Well, once again, bit. I think that this upcoming movie, The Days of Future Past, is giving them that chance to do this kind of reboot to make it a little less confusing. I have a feeling that the, that some of these inconsistencies are going to be addressed in some way here, too. Because oh, there's you know a lot of time said. travel and changing things. Uh, no, I don't. Though you know what they say, the more you try to change things, the more they stay the same. <laughs> okay, it- <laughs> so you think it's going to remain a mess? Yes, it's going to remain a mess. And no, then you know what? Off, it's, it's going to just forget th- about it. <laughs> I think it's too many cooks spoil the soup when you have this many people trying to do so many projects out of a single storyline. The continuity, like you said, is just going to stay. Not, not only is it going to go out the window, but I have a feeling it's going to stay out the window. Well, I'll, I'll tell you where it fell off the rails was when Ratner did three because yeah. it, it had a lot of vision before that. Then Ratner did it, and like he kills Professor X, he kills Gene Gray. And he said, this is the last X-Men movie. Why would you do that? Yeah. Yeah. And then when they did X-Men Origins, uh, the Wolverine story, they brought in this guy, Gavin Hood, who I'm sure is a fine director, but when you look at his body of work, uh, there's not really any like big standouts, which, you know, you go, okay, well, they don't always have to have those big standouts, but there's nothing that's really getting me. I mean, the guy did American Kickboxer back in 91, uh, he did a couple of the Delta Force TV movies. He did a lot of like TV type stuff. Yeah, 
he actually did something you like, Jonathan. He directed an episode of Stargate SG-1. Uh, and then he did do Ender's Game. Oh, no, he was in Ender's Game. He didn't direct these. So Wait me... a minute. Wait, who is this? Guy? Wait a minute. He was in. Okay. <laughs> you know, at least, at least I was close to Gene. I don't think you were, uh, I think so you were if way you go off back, there. If you go back to when he did X-Men Origins, he did a TV miniseries, and he did a bunch of like shorts and things that like I, I've never heard of any of this. <laughs> and then he directed Ender's Game, which is supposed to be really good. So oh, okay, okay, I remember yeah. who this guy is. That's okay. Pretty weird because now, now if you look at you know what they did with the Wolverine, they brought in James Mangold. James Mangold is pretty serious stuff. I mean, this guy did, I don't know if you're familiar with his work, but he did a movie that I thought was just absolutely fantastic. He did 310 to Yuma. Oh, good movie. Yeah. I mean, that is that is directing. <laughs> you know, that is a great movie. And he did a movie that a lot of people don't know. He did Walk the Line also, but yeah. he did he did a movie that a lot of people don't know, and it falls in. This was came out in 97, and it falls under the category of one of my favorite movies of the 90s, believe it or not, Copland. You ever see Copland? No. No. It's a Sylvester Stallone movie. It was a low-budget, you know, basically no-budget movie. Stallone was a non-entity in Hollywood for a while there. He signed on to do this movie because he was so impressed by the script, he basically did it for scale, Okay. Then he comes out, does this movie. It's got, and every actor in it did it for scale because the script was so good. And this James Mangold was coming out of nowhere, right? He he got, uh, oh God, now I can't remember who's in it. Um, here, I'm going to actually have to look it up while De- we talk. De Niro. It's Stallone. Yeah, De Niro. Ray Liotta's in it. Harvey Keitel. I mean, this is. Oh, wow. This is an awesome movie. I mean, this is. Oh, uh, Janine Garofalo was in it. I know that's a big draw for you, Jack. Uh, Michael Rappaport was in it. Uh, it's just, I mean, you start looking at this cast, and you're like, this is a pretty amazing cast for something that literally had, like, no money behind it. And I loved this movie. I, I just, I, it was one of those that uh, it came out, I, I had heard about it, it was an indie film. Uh, I was way into the indie film scene, and I was like, oh, this looks really good. And I was blown away. We bought it on Laserdisc. Yes, we had Laserdisc, and must have watched it, I don't know, 20 times. It was just so great. And actually, just to to wrap up the thing on Copland, uh, and I don't know if he's going to be involved in it, but there is talk that it is being made into a TV series. So I would be down with that. I mean, this is a a story, this is a, a universe that is ripe for something like that. So here I'm talking about something you guys don't know anything about. Let's go back to the Wolverine. So in summary, I really Snick. enjoyed the Wolverine. <laughs> J- Jack, I think we need Jonathan on these podcasts because he brings us back. Well, yeah, it, it's usually it's me. It, I don't know how we got from there to here, but at least we're back. We're back. We're <laughs> yeah. back, baby. I can sort of track how we got there, but it's kind of a blur. Yeah, but do we really need to? No. So this movie, this is another thing that made this movie much stronger compared to the first one. It is based on an actual series in the Wolverine uh, comic series. And it was done by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller. Okay, there was a limited series in 1982 that was just Wolverine. It was by these guys. These are two major, major players. I mean, Chris Claremont is responsible for you know, bringing the X-Men back in the 80s and doing, you know, that whole story and all that stuff that really is the basis for these movies that really launched all this. In this case, with X-Men or with uh, Origins, they kind of ignored that. They kind of made up their own thing. Whereas here, they went back to that source material, and that's why this is so much better. And, uh, And then Frank Miller, obviously, he's huge. I mean, this is the guy that did, you know, the Dark Knight Returns, which is the greatest comic. So you guys have read that, right? Oh, please tell no. me you've read it. Neither one of you have read The Dark Knight. I know almost pretty much nothing about comics. I've read. Yeah, have I, you seen? There's an animated film of it that came oh, out yeah, last I've year. Seen, or two uh, part. part. I've seen part one. Okay, what did you think of that? 
I really enjoyed it. It was really different, a lot different. You need to see part two. That that animated film, the, that pairing is so close to the source material. It's just amazing. If you're a fan of the source material, it's not one of those where you watch it and go like, oh, they made a crappy comic out of it. Uh, Hulk World is a great example of that. Uh, this is just like, man, this is amazing. Hmm. But it's worth reading. Jack, have you read it? I actually, well, I read The Dark Knight a um, long, long time ago. And basically, I think it was because it was right about the time that we were going to Elmhurst College together. In fact, it was. It came out when I was a freshman at Elmhurst College. Yeah. Uh, and I would bring it with me, and I was reading it as it was coming out. So I probably loaned it to you. Yeah, I think I read all your books, and I really did like the series because it really kind of took uh, where kind of Batman was, like way in the old age, where you know at exactly the, at the comics at the time there was nothing like that. You know, everybody no. just was like you know between the age of twenty and thirty forever. Right. Right, and this just completely broke the mold. Well, and he and Chris Claremont did this Wolverine series, and that's, once again, why this movie was so much better, because it took that source material and worked from there. Wow. That makes a that makes a big deal. Jonathan, you should be reading comics. You're missing out. There's, yeah. there's a lot of great stuff you should be getting into. Yeah. Um, well, Don't let I Kirk know. hear you. Kirk from the Biters podcast, he's a comic book artist. And Jeff is a comic book writer. Yes, Don't let those guys hear this. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it will be a podcaster smackdown at one of yeah. our holiday parties. Uh, one thing um, I was kind of looking forward to is that uh, if you guys don't know, I mean, I know you guys, um, but maybe the listeners don't know that I'm a huge anime fan. And um, back in 2011, they actually came out with an anime based on this series. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't know that. Yeah. Seriously. Now, what was it called? Was it just called Wolverine? Uh, yeah, it was just called, yeah, just Wolverine. That's it. Now, you're not talking manga. You're talking like an animated film. Yeah, like an anime. Well, it was like a, a series. I, I didn't watch all of it, but it was like a 12-episode series. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. And it takes place in Japan. It's this story? Yeah, I mean, it's it's similar. Um, not quite, but um, yeah, but it's pretty similar. Yeah. Now, okay. do you think they took that where they got Yukio from? I haven't seen the uh, the anime version, but Yukio seems like she would be something right out of that. What well, about Yukio? Yukio? From the Yukio's from the Chris Claremont book. Okay, but, I was just I was just wondering if this was a little nod more towards that. Oh, Wait. you know what? Actually, Jack, I get what you're saying because the way they dressed up Yukio in the in the movie very anime. She, yeah, very anime. Did you find that, Jonathan? Um. You mean so Yukio? Did that's, you uh, did you see any parallel to the way they portrayed uh, portrayed Yukio, uh, a little Japanese anime ish to the uh, to the Wolverine anime? Well, for one thing, Yukio. Okay, there's Yukio and okay. Well, Yukio, the anime, he's a guy. I don't know. Right. In uh, the body, the bodyguard is a guy. Wait, yeah, that's, Yukio was the girl that was like the bodyguard. She's the one that had the uh, uh, the, the ability to, to find Wolverine in the beginning of the film. Oh, okay. Um, so what about her? Um, well, it doesn't just have the anything. way they, they presented her, they presented her so she looked very much like an anime character, like the way she dressed and everything. Did you? Did, was she a character in the... Uh, anime series, and did she look more like that? Mm, you know what? I don't actually remember that character, to be honest. Um, I think it was mainly just uh, the Wolf Rain that was heading it up. But, um, I just remember it being Japan. I remember a guy that pulled a samurai sword out of his arm. So it's it was a little different, but I think it was a similar okay. story. So, so really, okay. Yukio really kind of comes from the book, then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, now watch. I'm going to be completely wrong, as I am half the time on this show, and uh, somebody's going to write, go in and, write in and say, no, Yukio's only from the movies. You're an idiot. Uh, if that's the case, I know I'm disguising my voice right now, but I'm actually Jack. <laughs> yeah, that's working. <laughs> Pot, so, settle, Nobody's black. buying that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the Silver Samurai was cool. I was a little nervous about how they were going to do that because I thought that from the book it looked a lot like the uh, – the Destroyers from Thor, 
But I thought in this, they did a really cool job. I thought that even though it went all CGI at that point, I, I thought it was still really cool, that whole fight with the Silver Samurai. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. I, I don't know that you could do that any other way and you know, kind of be that size. Right. I just thought it looked, in the preview, it looked a little too much like the Destroyers in Thor. So I thought, you know, we've already seen this kind of guy. But I, when you watched it in the context of the film, I never thought of those destroyers once. I really yeah, bought into the fact that it was the Silver Samurai. Yeah. I did think it was cool how they, you know, they treated the audience like they were intelligent, you know? Like they understood what Animanium was. Like they understood the implications of Logan losing his healing ability. Things that... You know, they didn't take a lot of time to sit and explain it. They just kind of said, this is what's going on. Like, they just kept moving you along that way. It reminded me more of, like, a like, like a 70s, like, uh, action film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it didn't use a lot of exposition. It just got right into it. Whereas a lot of the superhero movies seem to spend a lot of time with origin stories and seem to explain a lot. They figure, ooh, the audience doesn't know what adamantium is. Here... They just went for it. It was like, this is a character. We all know who he is. We know what's going on. And we're about to cause a, a, a storm for this guy. Yeah, it definitely had an Enter the Dragon vibe. You know, with Oh, the, yeah, it did. With the bad guy with the claws at the end. You know, yes. Yeah, you know, Very much that in that style. Yes, yes, I see that. So they've already announced that they're going to do another one. And yeah, it's... Yeah going to be James Mangold directing that one again. Hugh Jackman will be back. And I think this might be it for Hugh Jackman. I, I've heard rumors that he's pretty much getting done with this. Yeah, so we've been hearing be rumors. The swan song. Yeah, we've been hearing rumors that he's been trying to retire for, I don't know, how many years. So, Yeah, well, this character's too good, and he's still there. But yeah. I think I think he got maybe one more Wolverine movie in him. Yeah, because yeah. these guys that do the superhero bit, I mean, especially him, you know, he really, you know, there's not a lot of things that you can hide. He, <laughs> yeah, no he, kidding. He gets ripped in these things. And, yeah. you know, imagine the kind of time you have to spend just to do that. Well, to get the body I've had, I have to spend literally, you know, minutes a month. And uh, I can't imagine to get his what he has to do. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I, I remember when imagine. I was. <laughs> I remember when I was like uh, in 2000, I was almost 10 years old. Um and I remember like watching the original. I think Jess record. just passed out when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to kind of make the record that you know I'm much younger than I sound. Um, <laughs> Jack's not. I'm not uh, either. <laughs> so I just remember um, you know watching that VHS over and over again. Um, so Wolverine kind of became one of my favorite comic book characters. So sure, I was definitely excited when uh, you know. When this came out, and I was also frustrated when um, Wolverine Origins came out, and I was a little disappointed. And uh, when Wolverine got his claws, I thought it was a little betrayal of what we had seen in X two. Yeah, and, although well, you know, what? I I did once again. I don't know if I minded that <coughs> stuff. I'll tell you what I minded was uh, all the extraneous stuff. Like <coughs> I always wanted to see the blob. On screen, and they totally like made him look like Fat Bastard, and it wasn't nearly as good as Fat Bastard. <laughs> that was weird. That was just get yeah. in my belly, baby. <laughs> That's right. Oh, uh, get in my belly. Um, so that bothered me. And then uh, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Uh, what? Yeah, don't do that. I mean, this is a great character, and uh, no. And they yeah. made the same mistake later when he was Green Lantern. Everyone complains about that. It's like, yeah, yeah Ryan Reynolds is not supposed to be that character. Did you see Blade 3? He was in yes. that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he was the worst. He was hilarious. <laughs> but he's not supposed hilarious. to be. Yes, Did I you know. See, now, if you watch Blade 2, Blade 2 sets that series up. That's like X2. That should have been, Blade should have been the series. And then they did 3, and it was just garbage yeah <laughs> that's another one that's ripe for for a reboot you know i don't know who owns blade um do it's you guys at, know it's back at marvel it's back at marvel so disney yeah. owns it now yeah so there is a possibility i mean they could they could dive into that dark sector of this and bring blade back you know that would be awesome and you know 
everyone will say like, well, it should be Wesley Snipes. No, it shouldn't be Wesley Snipes. No. Reboot this thing. Bring in a young guy. But be careful. And, and be careful. Model I posted it that on two. YouTube. I posted, I posted that on YouTube. Wesley Snipes, too old. And I got a bunch of like FUs. Get out of here. You know what? It's I, not that before. he's too old. I mean, he he might be, but you you could still pull it off with that. It's if you're going to build a series, you got to yeah. look at guys that can do the long game. He yeah. is getting too old to do the long game. Yeah, you need someone like you know, latest you know maybe mid thirty, early to mid thirties. Right. So you can have- right, right. If you get a guy who's forty five, fifty years old, how many Blade movies are you going to get out of this guy before he looks like he should be Blade's dad? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. Well, you know, you have these people that really, they see these things and they really identify with the characters. It's really hard for people to kind of let go of that. And then there's also that with the anonymity the on the internet where they feel like they can say you know, anything they want. But yeah, it's that... You but know. Jack, you're talking about the actor playing the character. No, I'm talking about the, the people on YouTube that are, you know, kind of... You know, F- right, you. That, are, that have their thing to say. I just meant when you, when you said that they get attached to him. Are you saying like if if that people get attached to it being Wesley Snipes and that's why they'd have a hard time with it? I think so. I mean, obviously, why would they? You know, are they defending? You know, the character right, right. or you know the vision in their head? Right. And here here's what I say to that. They're going to do that every time, right? What what ends up happening is if a new product comes out. And it's good. They totally forget about the. They don't forget that Wesley Snipes was cool as as, Bane, as Blade Bane. <laughs> I fell into Batman there oh. for a second. Uh, they but they they don't forget that. Oh yeah, Wesley Snipes in Blade Two was awesome. But they fall in love with the new guy as as Blade. And if they do that a couple of times, it's just like with Iron Man. There's all this talk about how how uh, you know Robert Downey Jr. is only signed for for two more films as Tony Stark. Uh, Avengers 2 and Avengers 3. He's right. not on for any more Iron Man films. But they could always There's, get a new contract. And well, they could. Fingers, although fingers crossed. <laughs> he's also saying that he thinks he doesn't want to do any more. At least that's what I've heard. Right. But every, so let, everybody we don't know. Gonna that gonna might be... and, everybody's going to piss and moan about that as soon as he does. But if if there's something cool after that, everything will be forgiven. And Right, right. No, I get that. What I'm saying is... You, you take something like that where he really is the linchpin of the Marvel Universe. He is, you know, everyone associates Robert Downey Jr. with Iron Man and Iron Man with the Marvel Universe and how it's working so well, okay? <laughs> even even with Thor doing what it did, even with, you know, everything else, it's Robert Downey Jr. But I still say, you, you, you put out Iron Man 4, you don't reboot the series, continue the series, you get a, a, another actor... And you make it a killer movie, and everyone would go like, "Yeah, that was the Robert Downey Jr. years, and this is the you know Justin Bieber years." Oh God! Oh God! Don't <laughs> let that be the case. Wow! Please. I can't believe another, you. Even, uh, another even, that was a joke. There, even as a joke. <laughs> uh, I have just, Bieber fever. I can't. I'm trying think to get straight. that out of my head. Every did time you say I Bieber it, fever? Justin... Yeah. Is that what you just said? I did. <laughs> Bieber Every time Bieber. I see a Justin Bieber thing on the internet, I'm just like, uh, get it out. Yeah. Send him back. Send him back. You know, but that's the thing. We're doing that thing to ourselves because he's just a kid trying to make a buck. And, you know, it's it's the kids that are kind of putting him there. And it's everybody else you know, doing the groaning that kind of keeps him where he is. Yeah. And yeah it's but it's also how he's the- acting. And also them, you know, everybody reporting the crazy stuff he does, you know. Right, right. right. Yeah, if a reporter was following you around, Jack, imagine what they'd have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe he scratched his butt in public. <laughs> News you know at what, 11. Jack? Wait a minute. Everybody listening, everybody here can believe that. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to say, I don't believe it. Former Army trumpet player falls far from tree. <laughs> That's when all the TVs. That's when all the TVs start to turn off. So the bottom line is, we all liked the Wolverine. We thought it worked. Are you guys excited for the sequel? I'm totally down for it. And they're doing the same thing. They're going to pull it from a classic storyline. Are you guys excited for it? Oh yeah. Um, to be honest, with all the other X Men talk, I've kind of forgotten about it. <laughs> okay. You know. Well, that's fair too, because man, you know, we've got Days of Future Past coming out, and they they haven't even released it. And they're already talking about. 
they've Apoc- already got the sequel in the works. Apocalypse. <laughs> and yeah, and that's going to be based on that storyline. This is where they're getting it right. They're finally going back to the source material and saying, what worked? What can we draw from here? Instead of saying, let's take all this other source material and we'll kind of make our own story out of it and we'll kind of use our own thing. They're getting away from that and going to what made us fall in love with these comics originally was these incredible stories. Speaking of source material, did anybody see Dr. Green coming out as the Viper? Did you go? No, you know what? I forgot about the Viper. Uh, it's been so long since I'd read that. Let's talk about the Viper for a second. What did you guys think of that character? I um, liked it. I thought it it just kind of came out of nowhere. You know, it's like the you know the doctor kind of driving, you know the 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 medicine behind what was going on with uh, uh, with the grandfather and uh, right, right. So I. You know, and you know, of course, it kind of takes you back into that mutant storyline. So, I thought it worked. I don't know the history of Viper, and you know whether she belonged there or not. But I, I really liked it. What did you think, John? Yeah, I thought it was one of the weaker parts of the movie. To be honest, it's just kind of almost like, almost like they kind of they just wanted to put a mutant in there, like a introduce a new mutant, just to introduce a mutant new in. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I'm tending to fall on the side of Jonathan here. Although, Jack, boy, I'm going to sound like I'm flip-flopping here. When you just said that, the, the way time. you said it, actually, I agree with you. That it it rooted it in the mutant thing a little bit stronger. Like, if you think about, about uh, X-Men, and, you know, yeah, we know these characters and we know their mutant abilities, but a lot of times they have these, you know, extraneous bad guys that are really like mutanty weird you know not dark knight characters but weird you know like marvel universe characters yeah, like ones that pull off their skin resulting in a woman with a bald head which was just yeah and, no. and, but here it was and that was a very marvel way of doing it yeah so even though my reaction was yeah i thought it was a little uh yeah it was a little forced now that you said that, Jack, I'm actually having a different thought about it. I'm thinking, all right, I'm, I'm kind of down with Viper being there. Okay, yeah. so you almost flip-flop back to unflip-flopping. Yeah, yeah, I can't – I'm going to keep flip-flopping because it wasn't my favorite part, and I, I wasn't really I, – I think it could have been a stronger character. Yeah. But the idea of it is now sitting okay with me. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing is the grandfather was the central character, and this kind of had a, a small element. Uh, you know, really, even in the end, whoever you plug into that part couldn't really be a driving force in the end. It really had to be the grandfather. Right. right. And, of course, you know, it, you know, much like all Vipers, she had to shed at some point. I really <laughs> wish <laughs> Gross. that that part was very cool. I, I, I kind of wish that she'd kept the hair because I thought yes. that was, you know, losing the hair part was a little bit of a setup, but it was gross. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but like yeah, you I say, that's off. a I very, just... that's a very Marvel kind of, kind of thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, it is. Well, it is. And that's why I said, I, I I'm, I'm flip flopping and agreeing with you because I'm seeing it and going, yeah, you know what? That actually was a really Marvel thing. I just think maybe it was, maybe it was how they had, the character written. I don't know. It was just a. It yeah. Was sometimes weak. things don't always work on the screen. They work on a comic book, but yeah, it was just a little weak. But at the same time, I'm glad it was there. Now that you say that, I'm thinking, yeah, that that actually kind of roots it in a nice way. Um, I, I just say keep going with this type of thing. You know, he did this movie. It's going to be the same director in the next one, and he got it right here. I'm telling you, give him a second shot at it, and we're going to get another. X2. We're going to get an, a Spider-Man 2. We're going to get, you know, when when it, when the director is allowed to play in that sandbox long enough, you can get some real magic out of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm thinking that this next Wolverine movie is going to be a really awesome movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm definitely thinking that this this X-Men movie, Days of Future Past, is going to be fantastic. Okay, let's talk about that. So at the end of the movie, we get the little tag at the end. Now. If awesome. if you don't know the comics, did you understand what was happening there? 
Uh, which are, are you talking about? Ma uh, that the first episode end. with uh, Magneto or... Uh, right, with Magneto. Right. Well, yeah, like you say, it, it does kind of contradict one of, the, um, one of the other movies, but... You know, it's huge the fact that they're bringing together the professor and Magneto there at the end. Yeah. It's like something serious is going down, which means they're going to, this isn't going to be a couple mutants. Whatever this is, is going to pull every mutant out of the bag. Yeah. Well, I, I can explain a little bit more. I might be able to clarify. What about you, Jonathan? What did you think? Uh, I, it was probably one of my favorite parts of the movie, if not. Yeah. The I, I loved the ending. Now, did you understand what was happening there? Did you understand why we were seeing them like that? Um, well, I know why Professor X was actually alive. Okay. Jack, do you know? I don't. Well, I mean, he wasn't really alive. I, I think, wasn't it like at the end of X3 where they showed him like transferring his brain right. to his, dead, his uh, brain-dead twin brother, which was just... Oh, wait. To his brain dead twin brother. I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, I think it was it was either like in a deleted scene or end of scene. Um, well, I, I saw him laying there, and he says something, and they go like, "You realize he's alive." Hmm. But but here here's what I think was actually happening there. See, because X Men, like we talked about before, is very convoluted. There's all this like weird time stuff and everything. That Magneto and Professor X. We're from the future. They are the ones that are going to be coming back in days of future past to go back into the past and deal with that first class X Men. Okay, because they've got to conv convince uh, Xavier not to give up, and Magneto has a stake in that. That's why Wolverine's like, "Wait a minute, what are you doing here?" He doesn't realize Magneto's getting wiped out too. He now is partnered with Xavier and have to go back. I also think that in if you go by that weird timeline, the reason I think they're going to be cleaning things up or the way they're going to do it is what we saw in The Last Stand is there's going to be a splinter in time before that. So, yeah, he died there. And, yes, maybe he transferred his mental powers to his brother or whatever. But because of the things that are set in motion by Days of Future Past, he actually survives, which is also how they're going to reboot Jean Grey and bring her back. I know it seems weird and convoluted, and you go, wait a minute, it doesn't work. It's kind of like, let, let's quote Austin Powers again. You know what? Just sit back and enjoy it, because it's not going to make sense. Right. And that in itself, I mean, how many times have these superheroes been you know, completely obliterated, destroyed, died, resurrected? Uh, it right. happens. You know, these... Yeah. These are characters that have been around for years and years, and right. this kind of thing isn't going to change. It's not like a, you know, a Star Wars series where, you know, there is definitely a continuity and a timeline that when you stray from it, you're going to have, you know, a lot of you know people angry and quoting the actual timeline and this is what they meant and blah blah blah. It's, I don't think you can really do with the Marvel universe. Yeah. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about this whole thing. You tell my mind started going going away there and thinking about it. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I say we wrap this one up. Uh, let's do just a little bit of news, uh, a little bit, because uh, I think we're, we're uh, already kind of at our time here. But, uh, Jonathan, you and I were talking beforehand about the Spider-Man previews that dropped, Spider-Man 2 previews. Uh, what do you want to talk about with that? Um... No, I didn't what? watch them. I th I thought you were talking about the preview that that we've already seen the trailer, but there was something that dropped this week, which yeah, was just yesterday. These behind the scene featurette type things. Right. It was just um, it's one of those things where um, they were showing some kind of the scenes where it was like uh, you know all the different cameras and stuff, and he was saying how like you know he likes to do most of his stunts. You know, Andrew Garfield. Okay. Um, and they were, they also showed the rhino like in his full metal gear, unlike uh, in the comics he's like an actual rhino, right? No, There's... no, in the comics he's it's a suit. Yeah, oh, it's like yeah. a it's like a big rubber suit right, yeah, that he's wearing. Opposed and when, when they showed him in this and he was in that metal thing, people were like, "Oh, it's just the Transformers." But when they in that preview that that I saw, the trailer that I saw, I thought that it looked pretty awesome. It looked like it was a little bit more like in scale with him. 
Yeah. And uh, it, it just kind of brought it into now a little bit more, so it yeah, wasn't I, some big goofy rubber suit. Yeah, I, I thought that was cool. Yeah, I cannot imagine a rubber suit, to be honest. Yeah. Nor can I imagine a CGI. No, I no. I don't think that would work. I think this is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, it's probably CGI, but this is the way to go. So, Jack, have you watched any of these Spider-Man things? I have not. Every question I ask you, Shocking. I have not. I Boy, I, you know what, Jack? Not. You're missing out. These Spider-Man things are really cool. I think this is going to be really good. I think so, too. I think it'll... Uh, I'm hoping um, it'll kind of fill us in with some of those questions that I don't think they ever answered, which was why I was a little disappointed with the first one. So, you know, I liked the first one, but I can understand where there'd be a little disappointment. I'll tell you one thing I like about this series as opposed to the Sam Raimi series, and I, I really liked the first two Sam Raimi movies. The third yeah. one was terrible. I agree. With this series, at least what it looks like in this preview, I think they're really getting the tone of Spider-Man because it, he wasn't the Dark Knight. He was He was cracking jokes. He was using that to his advantage. If you read the new uh, Superior Spider-Man comics where it's Doc Ock inhabiting his body, he makes a lot of references to that, like, I don't have the quips, Parker. I can't say these things that you always say. Because that is Parker's personality. It kind of did it in the Sam Raimi movies. That was more about uh, capturing the, the, the artistic panels of the comics. This seems to be capturing the essence of Spider-Man a little bit more. At least that's my impression. Yeah, I was a big fan of the uh, the late '90s animated series. That's probably my more of my background with the Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was definitely my thing. With uh, I remember Peter Parker, you know, going through the different stages until he becomes like an actual spider. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Well, that that series, you know, see, I read it back in the in the '80s. I was a huge Spider-Man reader. I read it for probably ten years. Every title. And, uh, you know, I, I really have a sense of what Spider-Man should be, and or at least what I think. And I think this is actually kind of nailing that. I mean, I, I really watch it, and I'm like, oh, man, that is Spider-Man. That is it. Although, once again, I'm not going to say anything bad about those Sam Raimi movies. I truly enjoyed those. Yeah, Spider-Man was... 2 is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, talk about Doc Ock. That was fantastic yeah, along with X, that was just a great movie along with x-men 2000 that was those are definitely big I had both those no the first one vhs the second on dvd those i was a big fan of as a kid yeah right and they didn't overdo the cgi like the integration of doc ock with the you know, the no. the arms no. and the spine no it looks so believable that was just really that was great. that was awesome well, even the scene when he stops the train in Spider-Man 2, like, it, that looks so believable. I've watched it actually recently on Blu-ray, and it it's still very believable when that happens. Like, you feel his pain. You feel the tension. You're like, this is a CGI train. There's no way they're, they're doing this effect. Yet, it looked so real. It was just great. So, we've got that coming up. We've got Winter Soldier coming up, which is incredible. Uh, we, we, we've kind of beaten this on the show. We've talked about the Netflix stuff. The only thing that really dropped this week that I perked up to was, I don't know if you guys caught this, but they, they were talking about Avengers 2, which has started shooting, which is, you know, that's awesome in and of itself. But they mentioned that uh, they were talking about, uh, Joss Whedon, I'm sorry, Joss Whedon was talking about the Black Widow and said, yeah, she's really got a big part in, Winter Soldier, she's really important. And he said, expect her to have an even bigger part in Avengers 2. And they revealed that, or maybe it wasn't him, maybe it was Kevin Feig was saying this, that they have been talking about developing a standalone Black Widow movie, which I think Black Widow is ripe for her own movie. I think that Hawkeye, they have to get to the character that's in the comics before they can do a Hawkeye movie. Otherwise, he's superhero, you know, whatever, and he's going to shoot his arrows. If you read the comics, it's a completely different universe. It works so well. I would love them to do Hawkeye from the comics. Black Widow, I think that's just ripe. I think they can do so much with that. So there we go. That's the news that I had. What about you guys? Anything? Uh, to comment really. on what, what you just said, um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know a whole lot about it from the com Black Widow from the comics, but 
<clears throat> just like in Avengers, you know, for the first like twenty, what was it like twenty minutes? We didn't see any of the big characters. Uh, we just saw the shield people, shield guys, you know, Hawkeye, right. Black Widow, and the other shield. And I kind of like that. And I guess I'm not as interested in seeing just the Black Widow. Oh, see, she's got a great story. Okay. I think that you would turn around on it if you saw that. Right. Oh, I know the other the other bit of news, uh, and this isn't going to do any good. We can't say tonight because this isn't going to air tonight. But uh, by the time this hits uh, the Internet tomorrow, yeah, this will have already hour. aired. The Guardians of the Galaxy trailer is going to be on tonight on Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, tomorrow, when, when you're getting this, you'll be able to... to uh, watch it online i'm sure uh, have you guys seen the 10 second trailer the uh, teaser? jonathan you got to go to our the nuff said facebook page i posted it there oh yeah yeah i have seen the teaser yeah the teaser it's 15 seconds yep. oh man does it that look good. cool it looks cool now jack are you down with that i am i you know right now i was just looking up um some of the stuff with the uh the winter soldier and yeah. you know because you know that's coming up quick and i just I'm looking forward to that, but talking about some of the other characters, I think what we've seen really are kind of the the name brands. Not, you know, before you see some of the, and I don't want to call them minor characters because they're all, you know. Well, right. So you're you're saying like we've seen Iron Man and Thor and Hulk. These are the big guys. Guardians of the Galaxy. Most people don't know who they are. Right, and I think that's a hard sell for the bean counters. I don't think so, because if you read the comic, you would see right away that it's ripe for a movie. People may not know these characters right now, but put this thing out. It has the flavor of a Marvel film. I mean, that that little 15-second spot, I was like, I was so in. I was so in. I was like, this is going to be incredible. I don't think it's hard to sell on the bean counters, because it's got the name Marvel, and the source material is good. It is, but, you know, I think that's coming from a lot of people that know the Marvel Universe and are going to want to see some of the other other characters. Yeah, as, I, mean, yeah, I agree, yeah. As someone who's not big into the comics, you know, I'm definitely going to see it, you know. Hopefully opening day, but hopefully night. But, um, yeah, I guess I'm a little hesitant if I was an average moviegoer because it definitely looks uh, definitely looks odd, you know. You know, a, Someone who's well, yeah, and it's not characters group. that you can you haven't seen these characters before, and like you've got a giant tree and a raccoon. It seems a little weird. Yeah, I mean, but I don't I'm, think I'm it's, telling you, this thing is going to be a huge hit. And I mean, I don't think it'll be like a big, like a maybe not as a big hit as the other ones, but I think it'll still be big. Oh, I I think you're wrong. I think it. I think you'll be surprised at uh, how popular and how big this thing gets. Yeah, I mean, I uh, really do. Thor two I, didn't wasn't as big of a hit as I thought it would be. Thor two that made a yeah. ton of money. Yeah, it did make a lot, but you know, I was thinking, I was hoping, you know, seven or eight hundred million. Okay, but, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. It made a ton of money, and yeah. it was good enough that they're doing Thor three. So yeah, all right. No, nobody's Thor with that movie. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, well, on that yeah. note, <laughs> <laughs> that note. All right. Let's end this thing, unless you guys got anything else. Nope. I'm That's good it. here. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. This has been the Nuff Said Podcast. We've been talking Wolverine, and next week we'll be back with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I can't wait for that because yeah. we get, uh, we're get we coming up to SIF showing up. Oh, yeah, looking forward to that. Definitely. And uh, what is it? Uh, Agent Garrison is going to be on, and he's going to be on four episodes. This is going to get really good here in the second half of the season. So very excited for that, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more news and more things going on in the Marvel Universe. Mm-hmm. I think that's it for now. Uh, you can catch past episodes of this show and all of our other podcasts at www.southgatemediagroup.com. Uh, Jonathan, what shows are you on? Uh, I'm currently on Radio Free Endor. We've done one episode. Um, I'm also We're also trying to get the anime podcast together. Um, uh-huh. And then and uh, you're kind of guesting on things, too. Guesting. Yeah. And, Jack, what are you on? Uh, let's see, I'm on the SMG podcast, Input Junkie, uh, occasional uh, satellite Input Junkie. And that made no sense. You're on Input Junkie. You're on Input Junkie Satellite. What else? And uh, The Blacklist what, Podcast. Isn't that what I said first? You said SMG. 
You just oh, said the SMG SM- and then Input Junkie. Oh, uh, the SMG Blacklist Podcast is what I'm. Yeah, about to you say. you can just call it Blacklist Podcast because you know, but it, it does say SMG at the front just so that we differentiate. But yeah, that's fine. And then what's you're on another one too? Hey, yeah, and uh, I'm on Baker Street. Which, if you haven't listened to that, if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, you cover Elementary and you cover the BBC Sherlock. And what I love about that show is. You, in particular, Jack, have a lot of knowledge of the books, and you do such a nice job of weaving the shows together and talking about the books. As somebody that likes Sherlock Holmes but isn't really deep into it, I find it to be a fascinating listen. I love it. Well, cool. Thank you. So, very good. Uh, That's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. We will catch you next time, one week from now. Until then, enough said. Enough said. I've said. Yeah, Jonathan got it in there. Yay. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. <laughs> help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.